The U.S. Capital Global, we are TradFi meets Digital Wall Street. That is in formation. That's what we do. We basically invest minimum $5 million up to $500 million um, as a principal and also as an agent, merchant bank. How do we do that? Well, traditional regulations, but also we do a little reg tech, we venue shop, we look at where it's the best strategic place to do the offering. As an example, we've done some offerings in Japan, Asia, the Americas, Europe. Why, how? I'll go through the sample deals. Let's go through, next slide. All right, so this is a great example, City Block. What do we do for City Block? City Block is a VC fund. They were one of the first tokenized VC funds that invested in blockchain infrastructure companies, equity, primary secondaries, and also crypto. How did we solicit for this deal? What do we do for this deal? Well, it was one of the first tokenized funds. What we did was a Reg D and a Reg S. 20% of this transaction was subscribed from investors in India at a $5,000 clip. 40% approximately came from Japan. Reg S issuance in the United States, also overseas, we set up a feeder in the Cayman. In addition to that, we, did a, we set up a dealer arrangement in the United States with other broker dealers. The balance of the funds came from our partnerships in, 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 in the United States. So this is an example where reg tech, we're using different regulations globally, right, and exemptions, setting up feeders so that it's all compliant depending on the venue to accommodate a diversity of investors to come in. On the FinTech side, what do we do? We basically, the tokenization, we enabled crypto investors overseas through channel partners to, to migrate those crypto assets into fiat because we're not accepting crypto into this transaction. We're accepting only fiat currencies in exchange for partnership interest into the fund. Okay, that was the FinTech angle there. So RegTech, S, D, and then certain um, uh, exemptions overseas. On the FinTech side, allowances for diversity um, through different venues globally to accommodate investors from India, Japan, internationally, and then also in the United States uh, to come in and migrate their crypto assets into fiat currency. All right, and then I'm gonna open up the questions uh, once I go through I think three deals, right? Next deal, let's see the next transaction. Icky, Icky Bank. I think they changed their name recently and they also have offices in the Middle East. This is a transaction, this is a digital bank um, and they basically, one of the top, I guess top 10 globally, they accommodate um, family offices, institutional investors that are in the crypto space, digital space, to have accounts globally. And they have basically, I think, over 250 uh, syndication desks that has over 250 connections. So they're able to migrate assets in and out of banks such as JP Morgan, Bank of America, BNB Paribas, right? So Icky's a value proposition for those family offices and accredited investors that have any exposure in other crypto assets, currencies, alternative assets. They accommodate easily for migration of those assets in, in and out. If you're in Mauritius, Dubai, if you're in Switzerland, you're, you're migrating assets into the United States, easy. That's what they do. What do we do for them? We, we we're actually, we did a convertible note as a principal from our own funds. We sponsored it, we invested it, and then we sponsored a syndication of over $10 million in their Series B or Series A. Um, and now they're uh, valued over half a billion dollars. Okay, so we were early investors in, that, in them and uh, they're doing quite well, growing substantially. They're focused right now, no longer capital raise. Their focus is 
corporate development, business development, growing their base. We'll see what's going to happen with them uh, going forward. They've been doing very well the last two years, especially. There's been a lot of movement of assets out of Europe, um, unfortunately, considering what's going on in Ukraine. And, and those assets have been moving um, out of Europe into other regions. And Icky Bank has been a very a excellent conduit for those uh, families and individuals. Next transaction. So these are sample transactions. What I'm showing is US Capital, our own notes fund. So we have a lending company where we issue 8% notes. We have a traditional private credit fund, like a private equity fund, two and 20, typical, but the average check size is a million dollars into the credit fund, LPs traditional, TradFi. Now, reg tech and FinTech, what are we doing with this? We're basically enabling everybody, we're in the process of doing a reggae, we're, we're gonna, in the process of gonna go advertising the transaction to everybody so that anybody could now co-invest and get the access to the same, similar return profile, similar rights and privileges that the family offices and accredited investors and qualified clients and institutionals get for the credit fund, the private credit fund and the quarter billion dollar fund. They're able to get basically access to this, same, similar strategy through this company. We're literally in the process going back and forth with the SEC, so should have had a disclaimer disclosure here. This is not as, okay. I guess it's at the end. Um, this is like private, um, but we're in the process of making this available um, for, for everybody, basically. Anything else I want to add about that? It's basically like a, it's, a bank, it's like a bank issuing CDs. The bank takes the proceeds, and what do they do? They do auto loans, student loans, real estate. The only difference is we're not doing retail investment. We're doing B2B investments. We're investing in corporate finance, companies, small, medium-sized businesses, primarily in the United States, but also internationally, that want anywhere from $5 million of credit up to $50 million of credit, that qualify for credit from a bank, but maybe want a little bit more credit, or maybe their use of proceeds are outside the bankable box, we make those investments from the credit fund, from the lending company, and, we, uh, and then it's a, it's a note where the investors get 8%. But what we're, we're enabling is, Anybody and everybody could participate in those, and, and, and on the notes, as long as you're over 18. Next slide. Sundance, this is a public company. They did make a, a, a press release, so I could speak about this. They are doing an NFT. This is a, a life settlement company. They do uh, life settlement investing, credit investing. Um, they are on the NASDAQ and they specialize in credit investing. Now they are in the process of issuing an NFT. We are the broker dealer of record for them. We're working with them and re reviewing, advising their issuance to basically invest the proceeds from that NFT. We'll go to invest into their life settlement and credit strategies. So this is a public company involved in, in, in doing a private offering so public company doing a private offering for, for, um, for uh, accredited investors, prime, uh, actually accredited investors only, into a fixed income product. So this is, imagine token, now we're tokenizing this, we're tokenizing that. What about our lifestyle? What about Charles Tell? What about our clients? So this is the issue in digital Wall Street. Digital Wall Street and Traditional, uh, traditional Wall Street, we don't share each other's books very well. Everybody wants to hold on to their accounts, but their accounts want access to another bank's product. So what happens is you get a selling agreement traditionally, but you still maintain your client information. The issue with digital Wall Street is there's this risk where if everything is free floating, investors are free floating, and the products are fully free floating, what about privacy? How do you balance privacy with AML KYC? Because you gotta know who's investing in it. My realm powers that friction and resolves it. So we're doing an equity uh, transaction. We're in the process of underwriting the equity transaction with them. We were doing a private 
offering with a few uh, institutions. Valuation bids came in very well. We're like, you know what, let's open it up and, and, and let's see, uh, and let's, let's make it available more, for more investors also. So we're in the process of underwriting it and the CEO, Ken's over here. And so this is where, in terms of exemptions, we're sensitive to, depending on the issuance, what regulation, what regulatory technology, what venue are we going to use that's favorable for the issuance, right? And then how are we going to reach that prospective investor base? What technologies or traditional finance are we going to do TradFi, which is a bunch of bankers calling up their buddies or on the golf course making the deals, or is it apps, Google Docs, and click, 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 and I'm in the deal for $2,000, I feel good. So depends on how you, the investor engagement is, how much technology is one want to use, what kind of investors they want, or do they want strategics? What kind of valuation do they want? They want a, a, a highly subscribed, excellent valuation that's popular valuation, like Apple's at a premium, or Tesla could be at a premium, or Twitter could be at a premium, or at a discount because of popular subscription? Or is it more like the Blackstone REIT that doesn't have a lot of hype, right? But it's all just the TradFi subscribers and you don't need wide subscription, you just want a few anchor investors. So what kind of issuance is it? That will determine, this is the convergence of FinTech and RegTech. What kind of regulation and how much technology you're gonna use. Next slide. I can't even read that. It just says our category. Oh, really? It's like the summary. Oh, okay. There you go. I already summarized it. Uh, okay, questions? I guess. What's the next slide? Oh, there's disclaimers. There you go. All right. Next slide. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions you guys have on the deals, track record, what we do, how we choose certain exemptions, how we use technology in the offerings? Um, how much technology do we actually use versus how much human do we use? How much is it enabled humans with technology? Okay. Oh, right here. How much technology did you build versus buy and pull together? We built probably 20%, 80% is put together. That's a good question. Building's a pain in the ass. Sorry, excuse my. Bengali or French. Yeah. How much I didn't catch whether or not you turn these funds. So people invest in your funds? They, they yes, they do. And do they do it through platforms like Alto or do they work directly with you? Do you have the We have we, we have we have selling agreements and uh, platform partnerships depending on the offering if it's open, closed, if it's min, max, or evergreen, if it's general solicitation or private, depending on the offering, we're very strategic on how, if, what kind of partners we're gonna to bring to the table. Because different kind of partners will bring value depending on the offering, right? So wide offering, let's bring it on all the partners, right? Pretty tight offering, private, Alzheimer's or biotech or a strategic oil and gas, all strategic. Probably not going to be widely, it's just going to be a few energy based investment banks. If it's a notes vehicle, maybe we'll partner up with many RIAs, registered investment advisors, and we'll set up solicitor agreements. And we'll put on the Charles Schwab or Fidelity platform where they could have a, a, a fee on it, right? A fiduciary fee on those, on those notes or. So it depends on the offering or, or strategic on the partnership ecosystem we're going to engage. That's a great question. Yes. What that? Other bro okay, so what's the appetite for other broker dealers to sell the assets? For the token, okay. Other broker dealers to sell tokenized assets or our deals? Tokenized assets are not 
um, widespread. They are. Some of them are. Some. Of, so, so I want to clarify that. Some of the transact city block, yes, tokenized, and we did have good engagement from other from certain broker dealers for that offering. The appetite for broker dealers for tokenized or not, they're less concerned with the tokenization, and tokenization can happen after the offering, right? It could happen within the week of the offering. They need it. Other broker dealers, it's all about the fundamentals, right? And then tokenization is just, it could, actually tokenization was, is, is very valuable. The appetite is high outside the United States tokenization. There is a larger appetite. And for CityBlock to get from India and Japan, that was all because of tokenization. That is rare, especially in the United States. The United States is usually, it's fundamentals. So, yeah. So do you have any sort of secondary market for Secondary? No, not yet. I don't, I don't, I'm not the sponsor on the deal. So we were only the placement agent. agent. Um, if I was a sponsor, that would have been a different story. Our discipline is mostly around size, five to five hundred dollars, or five to five five hundred million. Um, that's our discipline in terms of industries. We're pretty agnostic. I mean, the fact that we have oil and gas and clean tech has been, uh, 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 I mean, just the last ten months, energy has become important. So oil and gas was relevant. I. I'm willing to bet four years ago that oil and gas deal will not be on our platform. Um, so industries, you know, real estate does represent 30% of our transactions, given we have a, 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 the international footprint and the TradFi put, footprint, it's real estate's pretty easy. But then after that, then I'd say health tech, business credit, fintech would be the top other, but then you see I mean, you see on our website, we'll have consumer, electronics, we'll have so enterprise software, we'll have, you know, so clean technologies. So. Diverse, it's the size. That's what you see, commonality we size. Regional, we're agnostic to. I have transactions, issuances in Denmark, I have issuances um, Mexico, Colombia. Um, we have issuances in, in, in Norway, um, France, so it, it varies, regional, agnostic too. As long as we have an office or we have a service or an accounting firm or, or a counterparty we could work with. Like in the Middle East, we have a two, two portfolio companies in the Middle East right now. We have Deloitte over there as a counterparty and a good, great law firm as a counterparty. Recently we set up our offices, but we did the investments before we had our offices over there. And candidly, the offices over there are not servicing offices. The servicing offices operations are in the United States. Those offices are more corporate development, investor relations. Good questions. Technology, 80-20. Meadows House. Meadows House is in Dubai, part of the lending company also. And then we have two FinTech trans. Actually, Aki Bank's in Dubai. So three, sorry, three, three positions in Dubai, and then we have two more coming up. Three, uh, two of the three are already oversubscribed. The third is evergreen. Yeah. That means it's open constantly. Right, Got to tell a joke? I thought I already did. About my kids. Paintball, I'm doing paintball Sunday. I'm trying to invite my sister. She's scared of me shooting, but we'll see. I can convince her. <laughs> uh, anything else? Let's see. San Francisco based. I do have to say, I enjoyed the music last night. The hospitality here is excellent. Thank you so much for Talo. Seriously, I do have to say. That was fun. Can you talk about performance? 
the performance. Thank you. You making me dance. That was fun. That was fun. I loved it. I loved it. I had a good time. I had a good time. It was almost dangerous time. Good time. It's like, you know, make so. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat>